So yeah, I always shadow box before we train, um, just to loosen up, get in the rhythm, practice stuff that you're going to do on the pads, and yeah, just loosen up the body. It always picture someone in front of you, do you know what I mean? Change stance, do different things that work. Sometimes going south or cutting off to the right, going off dogs, cutting off to the left, and then yeah, setting up different shots. I remember travelling up to Liverpool on my fifth birthday and uh, we turned up and it was like this car park. It's like this pub car park and I was thinking like, what's, what's my old man getting me into here? Like, what, what there? But luckily there was quite a few other people as well. Um, I remember turning up and there was a, the, literally a boxing ring was inside the car park. So obviously I'm thinking, oh my god, here we go. I remember getting my hand, hands wrapped and that, absolutely like nervous breakdown and that. And um, got back in the ring and literally I kicked the boy like three or four times, he started crying and that was it, I won. And I was like, this is wicked, like loved it. I liked it because it made me different, you know, like all my mates played football, all my mates were going out, do you know what I mean? Even, even at early age, every, everyone wanted to play out, but me, I was, I was going to the gym, you know what I mean? Everyone's going, oh, what are you doing after school? I'm, I'm going to the gym. Like, it's just, so looking back on it, I think at the time it was a bit like I was missing out a little bit, but now I look back on it, I think it got me out of loads of trouble. It made me have some kind of purpose in life and, and now I would never change anything that I did in the past, you know what I mean? So I'm very thankful to my old man to obviously not, he didn't really ever like make me do it, but he obviously encouraged me to do it. Um, to obviously choose a better path and obviously it's helped in the long run, you know? Damage and there you go, he went to the head. Oh, beautiful. And fighting spirit, but my goodness, he was... And I think like all that stuff is not in a cocky way, it's in a, it's a confidence, you know? I mean, if I put you on the floor, I want you to know I put you on the floor. It's not, it's not like me showboating or anything, it's just a confidence thing. Um, and I think that drives your confidence. And in fact, it's very important to be confident anyway. Like, if, if you're fighting someone and you're not confident, you're only 50% of yourself. Confidence makes you 100% up for everything you're doing. Um, so I think a lot of the stuff I do inside the ring is it's just it's a confidence boost. Do you know what I mean? Um, pointing out that I've cut you, pointing out that I've hurt you, it's, it's, it's edging me on to think, yeah, like I'm, I'm doing good here. Do you know what I mean? Um, obviously, going back to the corner and your team telling you you've done good, that helps as well. Um, but also telling them, telling you you've had a bad round, that helps as well because then it drives your confidence to do better the next round. So a lot of the stuff that goes on in the ring and a lot of the stuff that people say in the ring, obviously makes, makes you do your best, you know. Before you go into any training session, what's your mindset like? What intentions do you try and go into a session with? Um, always enjoy the training, do you know what I mean? You don't want to look at it as a chore, do you know what I mean? You want to enjoy it. I, do, I train because I enjoy it. I like hitting pads. Um, but obviously when you know you, who you're fighting, you obviously got your certain techniques. For example, if you're fighting a southpaw, you're going to be working a lot of stuff. The pad man sta stays in southpaw, so you can work on your stuff. So you always have some sort of tactics within the pad work, but really just enjoying it, do you know what I mean? Let it flow. Like me and Reese hit pads together three, four times a week, if not more. So it's, it flows nice. We know what I like to hear. He knows what works well for me, likes my style, do you know what I mean? So, when, when you hit pads with someone a lot, you don't really say much even, it just, it just flows. He knows what I like to throw, he knows what, what works for me in a fight, and, and that's how pad work should be, it just, should just flow. Yeah, first few rounds just get the flow. Um, like I said earlier, me and Reese hit pads together a lot. Um, so yeah, just flow, warm up the muscles, try not to hit too hard and don't rush anything. Make sure your stance is always good. And yeah, just get warm, nice and warm, get the flow going. Try the right hand. Lovely, mate. Good, two there. Lovely, mate. Good, there, Jason, double. I can see from the stuff that you put out online that family is extremely important to you and it seems to be a big motivation for you. I know that your grandfather passed away recently. How much of an inspiration was he in your life? Yeah, like massive, like massive, like. Obviously, fighting as a young age, obviously my old man was my old man, but he was more of a coach, you know what I mean? He was, obviously, he loved me like an old man, but obviously when we was going to fight, I, he was my coach, you know what I mean? And obviously, a father figure in other aspects of life, but when we fight, he's, he's a coach. I didn't really look at him as a dad in the ring, he was my coach. So, my granddad was more the soft spot, you know what I mean? So when we travel up, I've got my coach, which is my old man, and then I've got like my, my kind of loving figure, which is my granddad. And 
Do you know what? Hand on my heart, I don't think he ever missed a boxing fight. I'm gonna make emotional. But yeah, never, never missed a boxing fight. Like, um, <laughs> but then, like, obviously, since then, I've kind of used it as I could have sat back and thought, you know what, I can't do it without him anymore. But instead, I've gone the other way. I've not done it for him, because I've always done it for myself, but it's encouraged me to carry on the journey we started, you know? And um, the, the, the stuff I've done since then is, it's been even better than what we've done with him, if that makes sense, you know? So, for example, now, now I'm sitting on two world titles. I've got an ISK and I've got a WBC, which for me is the two best world titles you can have in the Muay Thai scene, like, hands down. You get a lot of other world titles, but really, like, that them two are the most kind of looked upon as the best. Um, so obviously, in the back of my mind, obviously I'm defending them now. Like I'm, I've gone from being the, the guy who wants to be here, and now I'm the guy who's sitting there looking down at everyone else. So, and I think I truly do believe it's harder to be at the top and keeping that that kind of status than being down here working towards. Because you've always got something to work towards. If you if you're at the bottom of the pile or halfway through the pile, all you've got to do is look at the top man and say, oh, I'm going to beat him. I'm going to get there. But once you're at the top, you kind of it's a lot harder, do you know what I mean? It's harder to get yourself motivated because you think, I'm, I've done it, like, what's next? Like, I'm WBC world champion, like, what, what more do I need to do? But really now I want to go on to defend that, I want to prove that I am WBC world champion, I want to defend it as many times as I can in a year. Um, so, obviously there's always doubts that people are going to be coming for me, I get, I get messages every day saying I'd love to fight you when I'm 18 years old and I look at his profile and he's like 11 years old Spanish kid and I'm, I, I laugh, do you know what I mean? But then really, that's what I would have been doing at that age, so... It, it, you laugh, but then you, you kind, of, kind of relate. Everyone, everyone was once this kid looking at all these top boys thinking, you know what, one day, I was used to thinking about like Jodson Klai and Buka. Obviously, like, I've just kind of missed their time. Like, if, if, it was, if I was about three, four years old, I probably would be fighting them boys now. But I was guided. But I remember like, going to Fairtex and looking at Jod thinking, oh, I definitely want to beat him one day. And obviously, like, at the time, I was like 16, 60 kilos. He was like this big 72 kilo, massive tire, big old legs. And I remember looking at him thinking, oh, I'd love to fight you one day. What does it feel like when you get into the zone? It's good. You know what I mean, it's a good feeling. It is a good feeling. When, when you kind of get into that, the rhythm and you're feeling good and your, your shots are landing and you're making him miss. And you're, you know what I mean, there's no better feeling than that. And obviously, some days you can feel amazing. You get in there, and your timing's not right, and you're and you're not landing your shots. And he's come with a good game plan. But when you're when you're in that, I call it the flow. When you're in a good flow, and your shots are landing, and you're feeling good, and the crowd's getting you into it, there's there's no better feeling than that. There's not really like a set um, combination we do. I try and keep it as uh, as realistic as possible to to the fight or to sparring, so that when it comes to it, they're 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 feeling it real time. They're not, um, it's not like a set of one, two hook kick, right hand, left kick. It's free flowing, everything's a single shot, but it might flow together. So like a left kick, right elbow, body shot, elbow, it'll flow together. But I won't go, right, George, let's go left kick, right elbow, body shot, right elbow. It'll just be whatever he feels and whatever I feel together. I think that's the best way to, uh, to do pads. So how helpful is boxing sparring in preparing for Thai boxing? Um, I think, uh, it is, it is good to do, like, especially with tie boxes, we don't, we don't tend to move ahead too much, we don't tend to move around too much, but um, it, it can always help a bit of head movement, obviously not too much, because obviously they might fake you into that head movement, say for a shot like the Leon Edwards at the UFC, but in some cases when you fight a tie boxer who's more of a boxer, it will always help, a little slip, it can catch you with another, you catch you with a shot, Anything like that, the movement will always help you. Like your ring craft especially. Not being caught in the corner all the time. A bit more on your feet sometimes. You're always ready to go. Yeah, I think it's good as well. Obviously, when you're, when you're tie boxing, obviously normally you've got the eight weapons. Obviously with a boxer, you've only got the two. And another thing, if you're having a fight and you hurt your foot first round or you can't kick for some, some reason on your own, obviously you can revert back to your hands and obviously use your hands to, to push forward and win the fight. And it's, and it's a bit of a doghouse as well. We're so used to being sat back and being able to use all our shots. We had to only use two and it's a bit more out of our comfort zone. Yeah, we don't, we don't go to boxing mode. Like, I'm not rolling and, and going fin fee. I've still got my tie boxing stance and doing stuff I could do in a tie boxing fight. But yeah, it's just, it's just good to add it to the game. Defend the titles, keep winning fights, keep inspiring kids along the way. That's that's my main thing. Uh, I deal with a lot of youngsters and and that in the gym, so it's nice to see them kind of look up to me in, in certain ways. 
Um, but yeah, just keep doing what I'm doing. Now, I'm, not, I'm not in it for the long term, making millions and all that. I do it because I enjoy it and it's, and it's made me choose a good path. So just keep doing what I'm doing. Don't get me wrong, it ain't been easy. I've had times where I think I don't want to do this anymore. I've took the gloves off and thought, you know what, well, I'm done. When I, when I was about 15, 16 years old, I lost the love for it big time. Do you know what I mean, like you do when you leave school, you start drinking, you start going out with the boys, you start playing a bit of football because your mates are doing it. And I kind of lost a bit of love. No, no one from my school group was doing what I do. Obviously, I had my own, my, uh, my own friends from the gym and obviously I got them with them. Um, but yeah, it kind of got to a point where I just thought, I don't really want to do it anymore. And then about six months later, I see like people winning fights and I see a few good shows popping up. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to get back into training, just training again. Um, and then my old man does boxing shows, like uh, Muay Thai Mayhem, he got his own shows in Crawley. So I got a few fights on that. And then from then, I've never looked back. And I mean, just completely fell in love with it again. Um, started winning fights, started enjoying it. And then turned over to pro when I was, what, 17 years old. And then since then, it's just, it's just been a spiral show all, all the way up. <laughs> One of our main things is we like to change stance a lot. Um, so obviously if Reese is in Southpaw, I'm generally in Orthodox. Vice versa, if he drops back into Orthodox, I'll go Southpaw. So we, we use that as kind of like a, like a basic foundation and obviously we work off that. We like to stay on the outside of their front foot a lot. Um, but yeah, like when, I'm, when we say with flow, you don't just kind of throw what I think's there. We kind of feel it together. So it kind of showed me a shot that could be there and it's up to me whether I can step in to make the shot or or escape to make maybe a longer shot. I will see if I want to kick on, I'm going to move off to the side. If I want to elbow, then I'm going to step in, into range. So it's good to mix it up. Um, but when we say flow, it's not just find what you think there, it's find what you, what you feel is there. Shot! 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 I think I've been given all the tools possible and support that, that I can do it. And now it's just down to me to do it. Um, do you know what I mean? I can't knock anyone around me. Like I've always had good support. I've, had, I've got the best coaches in the world. So I've got a good gym. I'm, I'm around good people. So really, if you look at everything around me, I've, there's no reason why I can't. And then there's no reason why I can't go on to be, to be one of the best or be one of the greats.